Hi friends, how are you all doing? I'm August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and this is ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da, book recommendations for Virgos. <laughs> if you've been here since last year, this is a series that I started last year in April. And then once I hit Virgo season, I dropped off the face of the YouTube world. Life got really busy and chaotic and I stopped doing my Zodiac book recommendation series. It is back, baby. And we're gonna now go from Virgo all the way up until what's right before Aries. Pisces. I think that's Pisces. So we're gonna complete the end of the year, hopefully make it through the whole rest of the year at the start of every zodiac season, getting book recommendations for each sign. If you're interested in seeing all the ones that I've made up until now, Aries through Virgo, I do have a playlist dedicated to them and I will look quite different because it was a while ago, but every single video is set up the same. I'm going to give you some recommendations of actual Virgo authors or authors based on that zodiac sign in case my book recommendations don't fit your vibe. So you can read from those and you do not have to be a Virgo to enjoy this video. I think they would be great books to read just during Virgo season as well. We're also going to read aloud some of the traits of Virgos thanks to yeoldcosmopolitan.com who always does signs a little dirty, which I love. It gives a positive attribute with its shadow side. And then I give four book recommendations and four different like superlatives categories, genres. We start with a contemporary book, then a nonfiction book, a thriller or a mystery, and then a classic. So you'll have four different genres to pick from. And I have hand selected these books based on the actual personality traits of Virgo. So I hope you can sit back, relax, enjoy. I hope you find some awesome book recommendations through this as well. Welcome or welcome back to the Zodiac book recommendation series. I have with me here my handy dandy notebook. So we're gonna get started with some famous Virgo authors. First up, we have Roald Dahl. So if you don't know what to read this season, maybe pick up Matilda. We also have Agatha Christie. Queen Bee of Mysteries, Leo Tolstoy, anyone feeling some Anna Karenina, some War and Peace. We also have Mary Shelley, you can read Frankenstein in preparation for spooky season. And then we also have N.K. Jemisin, which I've heard nothing but really wonderful things about some of their series. So those are some awesome Virgo authors. If none of the books I recommend seem appealing or appetizing to you, maybe read from the mind of a Virgo. Now on to my favorite part, the attributes of Virgos, thanks to cosmopolitan.com because these are always awesome. So Virgos are known for maintaining high standards, which can also just be read as judgy. They're also known to be modest, which can also be read as imposter syndrome. They're also hard workers, which can also be read as control freaks. And then lastly, they're also known to be very helpful, which can be read as just being a martyr. So based on those characteristics, I have some wonderful book recommendations for you all. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So unfortunately, I don't have two of the books with me. One, this first one, actually, I believe I loaned it out to a friend. So I do not have the physical copy, but I did read it physically. And that's going to be our pick for contemporary. So contemporary for me also just kind of means like literary fiction, just a little bit more accessible, maybe something a little bit more popular that you might have heard of. And for this one, I'm going to recommend Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei D. Yachenko. This is a Ukrainian Russian book. It says it's translated from Russian, but I do believe these authors are Ukrainian. And in this story, we're following a young girl as she vacations with her mom and is then approached by a strange man, giving her very strange tasks and challenges to do, and she will be rewarded. And in doing so, she then gets accepted to this very strange institute, education, kind of pre-college. When she attends, there's a lot of strange things happening. It deals a lot with almost like metaphysics, mental capacity, shedding human needs and emotional needs. A lot to do with almost like the time space continuum. What does it mean to be human? A lot of surrealism and very abstract thinking, which I absolutely love. <laughs> but why I chose this book for Virgos is because our main protagonist, who I'm sorry because I don't have the book with me, I cannot remember her name. She is a super hardworking student. She will take any length needed and necessary to get a good grade. She doesn't sleep. She starts losing her mind a little bit. She wants to perform really well. Even if the homework and assignments that she's given are just so abstract she cannot understand she just keeps trying like she is ruthless with her education she's an incredibly hard-working student very admirable and she's also given the task to tutor other students 
and from my recollection of this book it's to the point where she is struggling so incredibly much and it's very apparent to the audience that like she is struggling to get this other student to see how important schoolwork is and how important these morals are. She's very strict with herself, but in helping this other student, it is almost like this martyrdom. She is superior in so many ways because she is full-fledged 100% into this school and learning as much as she possibly can. Her standards for herself are so incredibly high. It's a very academically focused book with some kind of like dark academia atmosphere, but it's just so bizarre that even even us as readers, we don't understand why these students are here, what's the greater objective, what's the goal, what are they actually learning? It's very vague, but she is just trying her damnedest <laughs> to understand. And I think this book would be really enjoyable to read during Virgo season, get super back into making learning and working a priority, becoming really structured, organized, inspired to learn, and also a little bit inspired to like kind of control certain situations situations a little bit more. So welcome to Virgo season, baby, am I right? And then this next book is the nonfiction pick for this zodiac sign. And unfortunately, I do not have a copy of it because I originally listened to it as an audiobook, which I highly recommend. And that is Strange Piece of Paradise by Terry Jens. This is a true crime book, but it's so horrifying and so wild. Terry Jens in the, I believe it's the 1970s, 1980s, goes camping with a friend out in the desert wilderness. And as Terry and her friend are in the tent, they both become victims of attempted murder. A man tries to kill them through their tent with an ax. An ax wielding murderer at a campsite through their tent trying to kill them and it becomes an attempted murder. And the rest of this story is Terry years later understanding that that has traumatized her and decides to find the culprit and the suspect herself, which leads us through this like painstaking interview process, going back to the town where the murder attempt happened, having to revisit her trauma, working really, really, really hard to get people to talk to her, to get interviews, to get people to just open up about certain people in the past, what they were really like. And it is so fascinating, my friends. Like the lengths that this author went to to discover the past and the motive behind her attempted murder is so wild. So this is definitely a book that is not for everyone because there are so many content and trigger warnings. Obviously, it's a true crime from the person and the actual victim of the attempted murder. It is just so well done. And if I remember correctly, I do believe it's the author who narrates it, which makes it even more fantastic. But this book itself, is ruthless and very repetitive because Terry just keeps cycling through these people, these interviews, restating her trauma, restating everything that happened. She is such a hard worker. And in doing so, by like trying to find justice for herself and justice for any potential future victim, she definitely becomes a helpful martyr in society. <laughs> At the time that I read this, which now it's been multiple years, I think I read this book like four or five years ago maybe, it did not have a lot of ratings or people who've read this book on Goodreads. So I feel like that can add to the, like the modest component. This book almost feels like it went under the radar. Maybe it was the time that it came out, maybe prior to Goodreads becoming a thing, but I had never heard of it. I just randomly found it on Hoopla one day and decided to listen to it and was completely blown away by this story. So if you're into true crime and this like very Virgo energy going on, I highly recommend this book. And also I do not know if Terry Jance is a Virgo or not, but that would be interesting to find out. So editing August, you wanna let us know? Now for our thriller pick, I decided to go with Misery by Stephen King. And I did find out that Stephen King is actually a Virgo. He's a Virgo author, so why not read some Stephen King this uh, late summer, early fall season? So Misery follows a novelist named Paul, and he's driving around one day, gets into a car accident, and one of his biggest fans of his book series rescues him, but then holds him captive in her house, and that's Annie Wilkes, an icon. I'm recommending this to Virgos or for Virgo season, because Annie Wilkes has the delusion that she is a martyr because she believes in holding Paul captive that she's going to help rewrite the series. She is going to make Paul understand how important these characters are to her, like help all of his readers have a better ending to this book series, but in doing so she is literally traumatizing this poor man and it's very gruesome. 
obviously this book has a lot of content and trigger warnings as well especially if you have an issue with like body horror it's this is a big body horror and psychological horror book but i really enjoyed reading this this is definitely my favorite stephen king book but annie just goes to like such great lengths she's also a nurse so she knows how to hit the most tender spots on paul during the like torture scenes but she also knows how to actually take care of him so she tries so hard to make sure nothing happens to paul that she has complete control of this situation. It's just a lot of Virgo energy, I think. But in doing so, she really is delusionally believing that she is a martyr and she's really helping him. Um, but she has her own issues for sure. But it's this element of control, this element of maintaining these high standards for herself. Everything is still done really cleanly, neatly, and very educationally and very informatively. But it, what she's doing is not good. So I'm recommending Misery as the thriller pick. And then lastly, my friends, the last book I'll recommend for you all here is a classic. And for that, I'm going to be recommending Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. This is a classic that was written, I believe, in the 1940s. Am I right? 1944. But I do believe this book takes place prior to the 1940s because it is a book that begins almost in like quote-unquote modern day wartime in Europe and then bounces to our main protagonist Charles's past and he is attending Oxford for the first time and becomes involved with this man named Sebastian and they have this like almost like brotherly bromance and definitely some undercurrents of a gay relationship with each other but definitely at the forefront is this core friendship that they have with each other so there's a lot of beautiful writing in here the sentences are so stunning and it talks a lot about politics religion and all these like very deep morals that i think can be compatible with this virgo energy of this helpfulness of this martyrdom and it's this whole cast of characters with both sebastian's very affluent family and charles's kind of absent family and then as they grow older what their relationship looks like so while while Charles uh, does complete his years at Oxford, he becomes a painter and the way that he paints is just so rigorous. He studies the classics. He is so enveloped in his painting. So I definitely think he's a hardworking character, but he's also incredibly modest. He's a very modest character. He doesn't want a lot of attention and he also becomes very enveloped in Sebastian's family, which brings up a lot of topics about, like I said, politics, war, religion, all of these bigger grandiose topics. But throughout it all, Charles Charles does seem to grow, but throughout it he does have high standards for himself, even though he came from a less affluent family than Sebastian did. Similar to Vita Nostra, this one just has such a wonderful atmosphere and ambiance of like dark academia, studying, being in Oxford, but it also has this like juvenile play, friendships, bonds. It's just so beautiful and spending a languid summer on this like beautiful mansion property with Sebastian. It's a tender like love story, but then so much happens in it as well. There's so much that this book spans and there are just some really wonderful conversations in here about art and bigger cultural icons and elements and history that's happened in the UK and in Europe since this was published and since the book was supposed to be like taking place at the beginning. So I'm recommending this book for Virgo season. So there we have it, my friends. Those are the book recommendations I'm giving for both Virgos and for Virgo season. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's a short one, it's a quick one, but I hope you can stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the videos for this series and your zodiac sign will probably be coming up soon if I haven't done it already. So. Like I said, definitely be sure to check out the playlist down below if you want to see book recommendations from past Zodiacs from last year. And I would really love to hear if you are a Virgo, if you've read any of these, if you also think that they would flow well with Virgos in your life. I personally don't really know any Virgos. I don't think I have any Virgo friends in my life. So if you're a Virgo, please let us know down below. We would love to meet you and say hi, especially me because I want some Virgo energy in my life. So if you made it to the end of this video, let's definitely comment some Virgo emojis. We love that. And I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!